The flight, of course, is long, and if you think about the flight, you, you might not go because it takes so long, but really it was very enjoyable, and uh, if I have a chance again, I would go again. So we're boarding right away? We are, and we're on our final journey, <laughs> and then we're going to kill something, I hope. Okay. Okay, here we are. We are in Africa. The Miker and Ron and myself, and this is just really impressive. The trip, the flight uh, was okay, but very, very long. But uh, coming here along the trail here and uh, and looking at everything, it's just, it's really good. And the accommodation looks fantastic. It's not like uh, sleeping on the side of a hill on a horse, a horse blanket, hunting goats, no. This is, this is first class. I don't know, a guy might want to sleep in, you know, and not go out for the morning or something. It's just too nice. We shot our bows and we made sure that, that nothing had changed prior to us getting there. They were okay, we shot and it was fine and uh, we had a good night's sleep and the next morning we're on our way. So Frank, what are you hunting today? Whatever comes in that isn't expensive. Like. <laughs> Actually, uh, I don't know where they'll come in here, but we uh, we can uh, hunt on this hunt. We can hunt warthog, um, impala, and uh, blue wildebeest. Oh, so you. We, we might have a good chance for uh, warthog and impala right now. Yeah. Uh, okay. We were going warthog hunting and. They hunt warthog is, is sort of a spot and stock. And as we were walking along, we found a great big hole in the field. And Gary, the guide, he, he got up on top of it and he started to bang on top of it. And Mike was filming the hole and he quickly moved out of the way just in case there was something coming out of that hole. Anyway, after that, we, we, we continued our hunt and we got down to where the river was. and. And that was all kind of cool because this was sandy soil, but as we moved down, we got along the river and it was, the river was full of uh, reeds, great big, tall kind of uh, reeds, almost like cactus, but a lot heavier, almost like um, bamboo, hard as rock. The river was clogged with these, uh, these plants, these bamboo type plants, and they made a lot of noise when animals would go through them. This river uh, uh, was fenced off to prevent the hippopotamus and uh, crocodiles and stuff from coming out of the river and up to the top, uh, especially when they used to have uh, tobacco growing up there. The warthogs, uh, the fence never affected them because they would, they would dig little holes underneath the fence. We really didn't know where they were gonna come out other than we just kind of listened and, 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 and if you could hear rustling in the, in the you know, in those reeds kind of thing. And you knew there was something coming out, whether it be a warthog or whatever. And uh, so I got ready and then Gary got in beside me and, and Mike was behind filming. And so it all came together pretty well, except the fact that the, the warthog came right in on top of us. And, and he was facing me, coming towards me, so uh, we kind of made it a, uh, made for a, a difficult uh, shot. I didn't have a really good shot, so I hit him high in the shoulder. And uh, those darn warthogs, they're as hard as a rock. And uh, so anyway, he came out underneath the fence and he took off like a bullet. Okay, tell me a story. <laughs> well, we were stalking warthog and uh, we heard some noise in the reeds and so we could hear them grunting and working on the reeds and it was getting a little exciting. So set up for him and I knelt, knelt down and then I got my bow ready and uh, PH, Gary was behind me and Mike was filming 
and that warthog came straight towards the, the hole. I didn't know there was a hole down below, and anyway, he came through there just as he filled, came out of the reeds and cleared the, the reeds. I centered his shoulder and I shot, but I hit him high, I hit him up high in the shoulder, and he took off with my arrow popping inside of him. So I don't know. I don't know whether he did any damage or whether I just will leave a souvenir for the next bow hunter. I don't know. But we're going to look for him after we get some blood sign and see what happens. Just like yeah, the same line is on the jaws from here. Okay. And then you just delete. walk down. You know, we, we, we did track him, but I don't think he missed the beat until he was far, far away. And I don't think it was a, a lethal shot either because you could see the arrow flapping away in his shoulder. So I think that that arrow would have fallen off after and he'll heal up and Did you somebody see else would get a chance to take him. No. Well, he was probably, he probably ran the whole way. You know, oh, that arrow on his back. Yeah. It's like a jockey on a horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get the thrill of the hunt and never kill the animal. Yeah. <laughs> Just scare the crap out of them. Yeah. I, should, I might even get an arrow with a paintball on the end. <laughs> They're really impressive animals. Great big tusks on them, you know. Uh, you might notice in the film here that there's three of them mounted on the wall, hanging on the wall, and they really are impressive. I would have liked to get them, that's for sure, but no such luck.